Welcome to the service video for RockShox Reverb Stealth A1 and A2 model seat posts. If your seat post has a RockShox logo beneath the post head, you have a Reverb Stealth B1 model. Go to sram.com forward slash service to find service information for Reverb Stealth B1 models. You will need common bicycle maintenance tools as well as some specialty tools. View a complete list of tools and supplies in the video description below or go to sram.com forward slash service. Secure the bicycle in an upright position. The seat post will be removed from the bicycle. Do not clamp the seat post in a bicycle work stand. Raise the seat post to full extension. Use a T25 Torx wrench to remove the reverb remote lever from the handlebar. Remove the saddle clamp and saddle using a 4mm hex wrench. Use a 9mm socket to remove the air cap from the post head. Use a small hex wrench to depress the Schrader valve and release all of the air pressure from the air chamber. Verify all pressure is removed from the seat post before proceeding. Failure to do so can cause the inner seal head and inner shaft to separate from the upper post assembly at high velocity during disassembly. Wear safety glasses. Use a wrench or quick release lever to loosen the seat post collar. Remove the seat post from the bicycle while simultaneously pushing the hydraulic hose into the hose port in the bicycle frame. Do not pull the seat post out of the frame if there is tension at the hose. This can cause damage to the hydraulic hose and hose barb or connectamajig. Clamp the seat post into a bicycle work stand to hold it in position. Place a rag under the seat post and hose to absorb any hydraulic fluid that may drip when the hose is disconnected. Do not allow reverb hydraulic fluid to come into contact with any brake components. Contaminated brake components can compromise brake performance, may cause brake failure, and can lead to serious injury and or death. For seat posts with a hose barb connection, use a 7mm and a 10mm open-end wrench to unthread and remove the hose barb and hose assembly. For seat posts with a connectamajig hose coupler, use an 8mm and a 10mm opened-end wrench to unthread and remove the connectamajig coupler and hose assembly. Use internal snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring from the bottom of the lower post. Slide the upper post into the lower post to expose the inner shaft. Install RockShox vice blocks into the vise. Clamp the inner shaft into the 10mm groove of the vice blocks just tight enough to keep the shaft from spinning. Use an 11mm opened-end wrench to hold the seal head in place and use a 10mm opened-end wrench to unthread and remove the poppet cover from the inner seal head. Some air pressure may still exist within the seat post which could cause the poppet valve cover to dislodge unexpectedly. Loosen the poppet cover very slowly to allow any pressure to dissipate in a controlled manner. Use needle nose pliers to pull the poppet valve from the inner shaft. Use an 11mm opened-end wrench to unthread and remove the seal head from the inner shaft. Use a pick to remove the foam washer and the bottom-out o-ring from the lower post. Do not scratch any sealing surfaces when servicing your reverb stealth. Scratches can cause leaks. Clamp the lower post horizontally in a vise with grooved aluminum soft jaws. Use a 34mm open end or adjustable wrench to unthread the top cap from the lower post. Remove the upper post from the lower post. For 355 and 420 mm posts with 100 mm of travel and 420 mm posts with 125 mm of travel, use a long wooden or plastic dowel to push the false bottom insert from the lower post. Clean the inside and outside of the lower post with isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag and set it aside. Remove the three brass keys from the upper post. Point the inner shaft at a fluid container and push the inner shaft into the upper post. Oil will eject out of the center of the inner shaft. Leave a small amount of the inner shaft exposed. 
Install soft jaws in the vise and clamp the post head into the vise. Use a 23 mm box end wrench to unthread the inner seal head from the bottom of the upper post. To prevent damage to the inner seal head wrench flats, make sure the wrench is firmly tightened against the wrench flats while unthreading the seal head from the upper post. Do not strike the wrench against the inner shaft, as this may scratch the inner shaft. Remove the inner seal head from the upper post. Pull the inner shaft from the upper post. Remove the top cap from the upper post. Insert a 1.5 mm hex wrench into one of the cross holes of the IFP tube. Use pliers to carefully pull the IFP tube out of the upper post. Remove the upper post from the vise and pour the fluid into a container. Clamp the post head back into the vise with soft jaws. Insert 7 to 9 20 cm cable ties, one at a time, into the upper post through the IFP. Pull on all of the ties at once to remove the IFP from the upper post. Discard the IFP. Remove the O-ring and foam ring from inside the top cap. Clamp the top cap by the wrench flats into a flat section of the soft jaws. Use caution not to over-tighten the top cap into the vise. Over-tightening can cause the top cap to become misshapen. Use a downhill tire lever to pry the dust wiper out of the top cap. Grease all new O-rings and seals before installation. Install a new O-ring into the top cap. Soak a new foam ring in RockShox Reverb Fluid and install it into the top cap above the bushing. Carefully remove the energizer spring from the new dust wiper. Insert the small end of the new dust wiper into the bottom of the lower post. Place the top cap on your bench with the logo facing up. Use the lower tube to depress the dust wiper into the top cap, then reinstall the energizer spring. Remove the O-rings from the outer seal head. Clean any dirt or debris from the seal head and install new O-rings. Use your finger or a pick to remove the O-rings from the poppet valve. Clean the poppet valve, then install new O-rings. Remove the two backup rings and the O-ring from the inner shaft piston. Use a pick to remove the poppet O-ring from inside the main piston. Then install a new O-ring. Clean the inner shaft piston and install two new backup rings and a new O-ring. The O-ring must be between the backup rings. Remove the bushing from the inner seal head. Use your fingers or a pick to remove the two external O-rings, the internal U-cup, and the internal top-out bumper. Be careful not to scratch any of the surfaces of the inner seal head. Clean the inner seal head. Install the inner U-cup with the opened end facing away from the wrench flats on the seal head. Install new external O-rings, a new top-out bumper, and a new bushing.
Clamp the post head into the vise with soft jaws. Apply a liberal amount of SRAM butter to the top cap seals and bushing. Slide the top cap onto the upper post with the wiper seal toward the post head. Install the IFP tube with the cross holes facing up into the upper post. Push down firmly on the IFP tube until it snaps securely into the upper post. Ensure the IFP tube is secure and centered. The tube should be below the top of the upper post when installed correctly. Apply a layer of SRAM butter around the inside and outside of the new one-piece IFP. Install the IFP into the upper post and onto the IFP tube. Orientation of the IFP is not critical. Use the Reverb IFP Height Tool to press the IFP into the upper post to the Stealth All line on the tool. Pour reverb fluid into the IFP tube until the fluid overflows into the upper post and is level with the top of the upper post. Use your finger to remove any bubbles from the surface of the reverb fluid. Apply a liberal amount of SRAM butter to the internal U-cup of the internal seal head. Slide the internal seal head onto the inner shaft. Wrap a rag around the upper post to catch any fluid overflow. Insert the end of the inner shaft piston into the IFP tube, just enough for the piston O-ring to engage the IFP tube. The inner shaft must not be pressed any further into the IFP tube until the seat post is completely reassembled to ensure proper fluid level. Push the seal head down and slowly thread the seal head just enough to allow the O-ring to displace fluid. Unthread the seal head and wipe the excess fluid away from the O-ring and O-ring gland in the post. Excess fluid in the upper post O-ring gland can cause the O-ring to protrude from the seal head and become damaged when tightening the seal head. Slowly thread the seal head into the upper post, making sure the O-ring does not protrude from the upper post. Confirm the O-ring has not protruded from the upper post before proceeding. Use a 23mm crow foot socket to tighten the seal head. Do not strike the crow foot socket against the inner shaft, as this may scratch the inner shaft. Apply a liberal amount of SRAM butter to the key slots. Vertical wear lines on the keys are an indication that the keys are worn and should be replaced. When replacing the keys, Make sure that the new keys have the same number of etched lines as the old keys. Install the brass keys into the slots. The orientation of the keys is not critical. Squeeze the inner seal head bushing, then slide the lower post over the bushing. Align the lower posts with the brass keys and ensure that the etched RockShox logo is lined up with the back of the seat post head. Install a new bottom out O-ring. For 355 and 420 mm posts with 100 mm of travel and 420 mm posts with 125 mm of travel, apply SRAM butter to the false bottom insert O-ring. Then install it into the lower post. Orientation of the false bottom insert is not critical. Install a new foam washer into the lower post. Place RockShox vice blocks into the vise and clamp the inner shaft into the 10 mm groove, just tight enough to keep it from spinning. Thread the outer seal head onto the inner shaft. Use a torque wrench and an 11 mm crow foot socket to tighten the seal head. Consult this chart and set the fluid level height on the fluid level gauge. Insert the fluid level gauge into the inner shaft, then pull out on the plunger to remove the fluid. Repeat this process until no more fluid is removed from the inner shaft. Apply a small amount of SRAM butter to the poppet valve O-rings. Do not apply grease to the area between the poppet valve O-rings, as this will cause the seat post to function improperly. Insert the poppet valve into the inner shaft and use needle nose pliers to press it firmly into the seal head. Thread the poppet valve cover into the seal head. 
Use an 11 mm open end wrench to hold the seal head in place and use a torque wrench and a 10 mm crow foot socket to tighten the poppet valve cover. Pull the upper post out of the lower post until it stops. Use internal snap ring pliers to reinstall the snap ring. Check that the snap ring is securely installed in the groove by using the pliers to rotate the ring back and forth. Clamp the lower post horizontally into a vise with grooved aluminum soft jaws. Thread the top cap onto the lower post. Use a torque wrench and a 34 mm crow foot socket to tighten the top cap. Use a shock pump to pressurize the seat post to 250 PSI. Use a 9 mm socket to reinstall the air cap. Place the seat post back into the bicycle workstand. For seat posts with a hose barb connection, thread the hose barb into the poppet valve cover. Use a 7 mm open end wrench to hold the hose barb in position and use a 10 mm crow foot socket and torque wrench to tighten the hose barb. For seat posts with a connectamajig, thread the connectamajig coupler into the poppet valve cover. Hold the coupler in place with an 8 mm open end wrench and use a 10 mm crow foot socket and a torque wrench to tighten the coupler. Before using your seat post, you must bleed the remote system. Click this link for video instructions or go to sram.com forward slash service to find written instructions. This concludes the full service procedure for RockShox Reverb Stealth A1 and A2 seat posts.